yesterday morning it was so crowded I was hoping it would be a few less people today so, uh, so this is good. Uh, I'm going to try to talk for a little less than my my 15 minutes and try to leave more time for discussion because some of what I want to talk about I really want to hear what what people here have to say and, and so leave some time for that. And I'm not going to I have notes, I'm not going to read my paper, which of course expanded as I was trying to think about what to say here. The paper is on my website, if anyone wants to read the whole paper, dennisfox.net. Um, and I want to make a few points and then get to the part that I think <coughs> would, would um, generate you know, some discussion. Uh, the, the first point is that the way I look at anarchism and have looked at it for the um, you know, since the, the late 70s, early 80s, when I started finding out about it, is that um, anarchism is a lot of things, and there are people here at this conference from different tendencies in anarchism and different focuses, uh, but one, one thing with the background in psychology, it, it's always seemed to me that anarchism, in part, is inherently psychological, that um, you know, it's also political, and it, it's philosophical, and it's economic, and it's other things, but a lot of what anarchists... Um, uh, propose and, and imagine and have problems with are uh, the personal part of interactions with other people and figuring out what we want to do with our own lives. And you know, in some of the sessions I've been to here, that's come up in different ways. Uh, somebody talks about you know problems of working with our own groups and, and power in our own groups, and someone talks about uh, adjusting our lives to match the future society we want to have, and how do we try to do that now when we've uh, when we don't really know how, and, and so, and I think a lot of what um, anarchists advocate uh, has always been this sort of uh, way to figure out how to bridge the world we want outside with the kind of world we want um, for ourselves and uh, the people we're uh, interacting with on a daily basis. And you can look at that in psychological terms, and some of this I think will come up in the sociology presentation just from looking at the abstract. Some, you know, so you can look at this from different perspectives, and I don't think psychology is any more important than these other ways of looking at it, but I think it's something that um, anarchists uh, talk about in indirect ways. And, and uh, running through a lot of anarchist thinking is sort of this tension between the individual and the community, the individual and society, autonomy and mutuality. We want mutual aid, but we also want to be ourselves. How do we, how do we learn how to uh, identify those sometimes conflicting <coughs> needs or urges within ourselves and um, put them into practice? Um, so, and this, this tension between individuality and uh, uh, mutuality is at the heart of a lot of different areas of psychology. A lot of personality theories uh, are focused on how uh, the growing child becomes less egocentric and becomes, you know, in different theories, becomes a citizen or becomes socialized or learns how to interact with other people and, and you know, not be selfish. And, and so, so personality theories um, look at this, this tension in, in social psychology, which is my area. There's a lot of talk about the interaction how every, every behavior is a combination of causes. Nothing is caused by one thing. All our behaviors are multi-caused. They're caused by something inside ourselves and also by the setting that we're in. You know, there's a sort of a mantra social psychologists have of uh, behavior is an interaction of the person in the setting. So we're all sitting in a room like this and we have ways that we're supposed to sit and I'm talking and you're not. And all of this is because of the setting where we're not because I have more to say than you. Uh, and, you know, we could switch roles and I would be sitting there. And, and, and so our behavior is affected both by where we are, but also by what's inside us. And, and, um, uh, and, 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 and that to me, when I sort of went back into psychology after having discovered anarchism, it all just seemed to fit in a way that made a lot of sense to me. And this is what kind of psychology should be paying attention to. Something else that I think come, you hear a lot of anarchists talk about, and, and I've certainly experienced, is, is that although we know how the way we act in, in our ordinary lives is a, is a reflection of the culture and the society that we grow up in, we imagine being different and sometimes we think we are different. And so we, we create communities that are based on being non-possessive, based on being cooperative, based on being fair and discover we can't always do it. You know, we don't know how to do it. We didn't learn those skills when we were growing up. 
uh, and we don't always learn how to uh, communicate with other people in ways that are effective. And anarchists spend a lot of time writing about how our meetings just don't get anywhere, or that we, you know we try to do this and we don't succeed. And and so it's difficult. And I think anarchists generally um, recognize that it's difficult. But the prospect of figuring out how to do those things takes so much time and energy and often involves skills we never learned that we sometimes don't bother because we have to get the project done. We have to, you know, we have to get to work. We have to um, get out in the streets and we have to create the info shop and we have to do the thing that needs to be done and we try to we let these other things slide. And so there's a sort of a resistance to individual solutions because we know that these are individual solutions. If I work on my own shit, it doesn't really change anything out there. And we sort of have our priorities. Um, and psychology, although anarchist arguments are often couched in terms of psychology and human nature and, and psychological needs, psych anarchists rarely talk about psychology as a field of study, as a discipline. And uh, this, uh, this book that just came out, which I think some of you were in. I know um, Anna, uh, what, what, Amster's book. You know, there's 34 chapters on anarchy, uh, on anarchy in the disciplines. None, none written by a psychologist. There's not a chapter on psychology. <coughs> Anarchists tend not to pay much attention to psychology as a discipline, and I think often for very good reasons. Um, psychology is the field of study that is at the heart of individualizing our problems. You know, psychology studies the individual, the way it's defined itself, not the individual in society. And so um, if, if, you were, if, you know, if I'm having a problem and I go to see a therapist, the therapist isn't going to help me figure out how to change the world. The therapist is going to figure out how to help me adapt to a bad situation. And, and you know, different schools of, of thought. And, and, and psychologists have sort of played that role for the last 120 years or so in, in individualizing problems, blaming encouraging people to blame themselves for their problems and to look to themselves for solutions rather than looking at um, the political world, the economic or the social world. Um, and psychologists have also played a role in um, active agents of control. You know, and most recently I think the thing that's been in the news the last few years is um, psychologists involved in interrogations in Guantanamo. And you know, of course, there were radical psychologists who, and liberal psychologists who were much opposed that and, and tried to get the American Psychological Association to declare that that's unethical. And that took several years to accomplish. So there are people on both sides. But, but the role of psychology in maintaining the status quo is something that um, a lot of people have written about. And, and there's a growing number of critical psychologists who, who have, are trying to apply critical theory to psychology the same way that that's been done in other fields. Um, with less effectiveness, I think, um, so far, which, which I think is one of the reasons psychology is difficult to deal with. Um, so I don't want to, um, I don't want to spend more time on that piece of it right now, um, which we can talk about later. What, what I do in my, my paper is I kind of go through different areas of psychology, um, looking to see uh, where psychology really is something to be suspicious of and, and um, where there might be ways, might be things that we can use uh, and, uh, in making our work more effective and also making our lives more fulfilling, which is sort of psychology's promise, but it's always kind of a risky bet because it's hard, it's hard to know how fulfilling do I want to work on a getting if that means I'm not doing other things. And so there's a, there's a tension there.